Hey everyone, in this video I want to show a way to load your data from a file but using an easy way to get your column information. And this is done by letting the AutoML API infer the column information by looking at your data. And so we get started in Visual Studio, got a .NET Core console project. I already have my data, I'm using the housing CSV data here. And I'm going to manage my NuGet packages and I'm going to get in Microsoft.ml the auto ml package using version 0.17.4 all right and like always I need to create a new ml context i'm going to actually show three different ways to infer your columns here so the first thing is build out our column information using new column information class and on here i can just specify my label column name and I'm going to create a static string up here above my main method to hold that. So private static string, label name, because we're using the housing data, it's going to be median house value. And now that we have our column information object here, we can call the context auto method to invoke the auto ml api and there's a method on here called infer columns and we'll be using that and the first thing we need to do is give it a file path i'm going to create another static string here path and that's just going to go housing the csv and then next we can give it that column information as an, another parameter and then specify the separator character which is a comma and that's one way to call us infer columns method now let's put a breakpoint here and I will run it real quick just to see what we got all right so that inferred okay we'll dig in here look at the column information and so we have a categorical column we only have one which is that ocean proximity our label column name which is the median house value so that's good but look here we have numeric columns and there's only one of them here and that's called features. But if you look into the text loader options in our columns, the first one here features and it's a range. And we look at it's a range from zero to seven. So column indexes from zero to seven. If we look at our data, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is zero to seven. So all of these have been combined into a single column called features and so and that was done for us automatically so that's a cool thing that it does for us so that's one way let me comment this out remove my breakpoints let's do another way and this way we can specify the file path but this time instead of a column information we can give it the label column index so the index value where our label is in this case it is index of eight the column number nine and in this one we can specify that it has a header which is true and this overload is mostly useful if you don't have a header and you just specify the column index instead of the label column name but the separator cares as a comma so we have that way and I comment this out and do one more way, which is going to be the way I'll be using it. So context, auto, and for columns, file path. And this way we can specify the label column name, which is label name. Then the separator character. One thing to note that this overload and the first overload here, the column information, we notice that there is no has header parameter in here. It's only if you specify the label column index. These other ones assume that there is a header since you specify the label column names in each of these. All right, so we have the inference. Now, how do we use that to load our data? So in this case, we need to use a text loader. So we can do context at data, that create text loader. This can take in a few things here. You got column array of text loader columns, some text loader options, and then the multi-stream source and from here we just do inference dot 
text loader options, which is one of the overloads data tags here. So we have our loader here. Now we can get our data by calling loader that load and then give it a file name. So file path in this case. So now we have our uh, data view and we can do our usual things with it, such as I'm going to do a split on our data. So context data train test split, that's in the data and then a test fraction of 0.2 for 20% as my test data. And because we are using auto ML, I can create experiment settings with it, new regression experiment settings. And I'll just do max experiment time in seconds as 60. So one minute we'll run this. Optimizing metric we set as regression metric R squared. Our experiment result by calling context auto create regression experiment with our experiment settings and then we call execute and then we give it our test set then a specified label column name as label name and with our experiment result we can use our test set to get some predictions on it experiment result best run model and we can transform we can run the transform method on that model and we use our test set and get some metrics using context regression regression and evaluate to get our metrics there passing the predictions and then the label name and with our metrics we can just write out our r squared is the metrics r squared and then I'll do an environment that new line just so we get a little bit of extra real estate there. So we'll run this and we have that run for the minute that we specified and see what our results are. Alright, so we got our result back. Our R squared is about 92%, so not too bad. And that's pretty much it about using the infer columns method. And if you do notice one thing here, we didn't have to create another class that specifies our input schema like we would do if we used the load from text file method. So this is just a much easier way to, to get our column information to be able to load it correctly within ML.net. So all right, I'll end things there. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, give a like and subscribe on it. I would greatly appreciate it. And I'll see y'all next time. Thanks.